Hey, what's going on guys? Um, in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you a full breakdown of how much it costs for me to get a 3D print farm set up. Um, this is unique to my situation, but I wanted to give you guys some numbers so that you can sort of get an idea of how much it costs to run and operate a print farm of this size. Um, I just did a quick count this morning. We have about 178 3D printers currently in the print farm. Uh, we have some printers that are not in use right now that are damaged that we need to get replaced, so I'm not including that in this count. Um, we have 178 3D printers uh, utilizing about, I would say about 2,000 square feet of space uh, that's behind me here uh, for the print farm. I'm gonna give you guys a breakdown of the cost that I paid for all the printers, um, things like uh, what I pay for shelving, uh, filament, um, just like initial startup cost if somebody today wanted to, you know, magically have a print farm of this size, uh, how much it would cost them. Uh, well, actually, let me run that back. Uh, these prices are pre-tariff prices, so uh, somebody who wants to actually do a print farm of this size will probably be paying an additional 30 to 40 percent on top of what I've uh, what I'm going to be listing out in this video. All right, so let's get right into it. The first thing I'm going to cover are the shelves. Um, you'll see here that I use these are called 77 inch wide uh, muscle racks. Um, you can find these at Costco, Home Depot, Walmart. Um, I've been buying these uh, while they're on sale at Walmart and Costco regularly. Um, they're 77 inch wide ones because from uh, the width of the entire shelving system is 77 inches. Uh, it's about two feet deep um, and it's about six feet high, I believe. So I got these from Costco, uh, Walmart. I pay an average price of about $180 per shelf for these. So we have two shelves. We use this shelf and then we use the five tier uh, Whalen shelf here. Uh, this is also from Costco. Uh, this is five tiers because there's five shelves here. Um, I will put the numbers on the screen in terms of how many I have of this in the print farm. And we really only use these two types of shelves. Um, there's no other shelves that I use. Uh, they were perfectly fine for the print farm. Uh, very little vibration, especially the way we have it uh, set up here where it's like kind of like back to back. Um, and so it prevents a lot of uh, shaking of these uh, racks. And then we use these mainly for storage of our um, 3D printed items that we finished that come off the printer and they kind of just uh, stay here. Down the line, we'll be expanding more down uh, towards this area uh, as well. Um, but that's what we do for the shelving. And as you can see, obviously we use, uh, we use the cardboard that come with the muscle rack boxes, right? Nothing fancy cardboard. Uh, we zip tie them down to the actual shelf and the wire rack underneath. Underneath there. So this, this doesn't move at all. And then underneath all of these, you'll see that we have zip ties that kind of hold the uh, A1 PTFE tubes up. Uh, this, this shelf actually wasn't set up properly. There should have been another row on top uh, like we have over here so that we can utilize the top shelves. I'm not sure why it was set up that way. I think we ran out of the cross beams, so uh, we just uh, ignored it for that shelf. So in total, we have eight of the five tier shelving systems at about $90 each. So that's, that's $720 for these shelves here. And then for the 77 inch wide uh, muscle racks, we have about 33 of these in total across the print farm at an average price of about $180. So that brings the total for the shelving to just under $6,000 at $5,940. All right, so let's talk about the meat and potatoes of the print farm, uh, the 3D printers. So we primarily only use Bamboo Lab 3D printers, and we're gonna go through every single model that we have. Um, first up, we have the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbons. Um, so we have three of these guys uh, at an average retail price of about $1,500. I did pay a little bit less for these because I bought them used from Micro Center and I bought open box ones, but for now, I'm just gonna put that I purchased these for $1,500. Uh, these do all come with the AMS units up top. And we only have three X1 carbons. And I like to use these uh, for prototyping and printing out uh, just other random stuff um, to play around with. I did buy a Bamboo Lab H2D, which I will be using uh, primarily just for you know fun 3D printed stuff. Um, but for now, three X1 carbons. So that'll run you about $4,500 for the three X1 carbons here. 
All right, next up we have the Bamboo Lab P1P 3D printers. And you'll see that this entire back wall is filled with all of them. Uh, we have about 60 P1P printers uh, all along the back wall. So these are the bare bone, uh, not enclosed, nothing enclosed, just Core XY 3D printers, uh, single filament. And we have about 60 of these guys at an average retail price of $499. Uh, keep in mind guys i bought all of these printers pre-tariff hike so if you're wondering how i got these printers so cheap or why the printers are so cheap compared to uh, what's available on the website or at retail stores um, that's why all right so 60 of these p1p printers at an average price of 499 dollars you're looking at 29,940 dollars just for the p1p printers all right next up we have the bamboo lab p1s printers so these are basically just the p1p printers but uh, sort of upgraded. They, you'll see that they're enclosed. Uh, it does come with a front uh, door panel here, which I have removed because when printing in PLA, you don't really need that. Uh, you kind of want the heat to be, um, you kind of want the heat to be coming out of the, the chamber in here. Uh, we're going to ignore the AMS units for now because I have the AMS is separate in my calculation for the cost because I bought a bunch of the AMS units separately. Uh, to attach to the P1P printers over there. Um, so for now, uh, I have 15 P1S printers. Uh, they're all kind of right here in this area here. And uh, these cost $599 for a total cost of $8,985 for the 15 uh, P1S printers. All right, and let's talk about these individual AMS units. I purchased about 20 of these uh, late last year. Uh, at an average price of $349, so I paid $6,980 for the AMSs. Um, a lot of them are kind of uh, not in use right now. Um, we have them up here just because we're not really printing uh, that much multicolor stuff. And honestly, a lot of these uh, hubs here are broken, so we do have to get these fixed and repaired. Um, but I did buy these. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them are kind of broken, and we're just not using them because we have a lot of Bamboo Lab A1 printers. Uh, which kind of brings me to the next point of the video, and that is uh, the A1 combos. So the A1s, the A1 combo represents a huge portion of the print farm. We have about 102 of these guys, uh, last time I counted, and they come, it's a bed slinger with an AMS light that allows you to print up to four colors. So these represent uh, almost half or more than half of the print farm in terms of the printer in terms of the type of printers that we have. Um, now I purchased these again, pre-tariff pricing at about $525 each. Um, so 102 of these at 525 is $53,550. Um, I just realized that my 525 number is including shipping for these printers, whereas the other numbers um, for the P1P and the Action Carbon, I did not include shipping. Uh, so. Really, I should be adding like another $25 for shipping for 60 of these P1P printers. Um, so just keep that in mind when I run the total numbers that I did not include shipping for the P1P printers or the uh, P1S printers, so yeah. All right, next up, let's talk about these, uh, these sheets because we recently transitioned pretty much all of our printers to use these cryo grip sheets. Um, these are all clean ones that we can just pretty much swap out um, to any of the printers. Um, but we keep like a, a, a stash here of clean ones, ones that need to be cleaned. And these are, these cost about $20 per, per sheet. Uh, so $20 times 178 3D printers is about 3,560 uh, just for the build sheets. And we switched a lot of these over just to decrease the amount of print fillers that we had in the print farm. So I think that investment in itself is worth it. Um, we do keep uh, a lot of the gold PEI sheets here just in case. Evan likes to swap these out and use them uh, sometimes. Um, but yeah, most of the times we're using these gray or the uh, blue frostbite uh, PEI sheets, which are cryo grip sheets, which we have on some printers as well. All right, while we're over here, let's talk about uh, printer accessories and um, spare parts. So this entire shelving system here is dedicated mostly towards spare parts and um, accessories that we need for our 3D printers. Obviously you saw the build plates. 
Um, but we also have like, you know, this little P1P hot ends, uh, the hardened steel gear extruders, uh, the gear assembly here. And we kind of have it sort of, you know, the P and X series on the top and then the A series down here. And then down here is just kind of everything else. We have AMS uh, lights, uh, filament hubs, AMS shafts, we have rubber feet. Um, so we try to keep stock of a lot of the things that we need constantly, which is basically really just the hot ends and hardened gear extruders and AMS uh, stuff for the A1 combo 3D printers. Um, if I had to guess, we probably hold close to, you know, $500 in terms of spare parts just here at any given time. Um, I think Bamboo Labs is running a sale right now. If you buy on the website, I think it's like 20, 30% off if you purchase some uh, spare parts or accessories in bulk currently, well, at the time of this recording anyway. Um, but yeah, that's the spare parts. It's always important to have spare parts um, and it's very important to have the same type of printers uh, in your print form because you don't want to have a print form consisting of, you know, 20 different models of 3D printers and then you have to, you know, source 20 different types of uh, spare parts and accessories uh, for your 3D printers. All right, and you'll notice that we have a bunch of CyberPower UPS units on pretty much every single rack that we have. Uh, we attach six 3D printers to the back of this guy. Um, let me see if I can get a picture of the back. Um, you'll see, notice that there's six slots. There we go. There's six outlets here that are surge and battery. I don't know if you can see that. This is surge and battery. The other side is just a surge. So uh, we plug all the printers into the surge and battery part of the UPS. And this is not a long-term solution. What it does is uh, in terms, in case there's power blips or you know, minor power spikes or power outages here and there, uh, this will keep the printers running for about a good 10 minutes, I would say. All six printers can be run uh, for a good 10, sometimes 15 minutes, uh, but that's pushing it. Um, but we really use this just for backup. Um, there's been cases where at the warehouse, we get these power blips and all of the printers kind of just shut off because um, there's something, there's an issue with the power. It also keeps sort of a, sort of a consistent power um, output to each of the printers. Um, this is not a necessity, uh, but when you have 100 printer, 100 plus printers and you have power issues and you know, once or twice a month, the entire print form kind of just shuts down. You lose all of the prints, uh, time, and essentially money. So we bought these uh, from Amazon. We were buying these also from Costco. Um, but I was paying $190 for each of these. And so I think we have about 29 of these in total across the print farm. So 29 at 29, uh, 29 units at $190 is $5,481 for just the UPS units. All right, and then the uh, second biggest expense, I would say that's a continuous expense when you have the print farm set up is your filament. Um, I would say that this is probably the most expensive part of running a 3D print farm. Uh, aside from the actual 3D printers. Um, so at any given point, uh, we try to keep about a thousand rolls or uh, when I try to do my inventory count and reordering of plastic, we try to keep about a thousand rolls in stock at the warehouse at any given point um, because these printers do use up a lot of plastic. Um, so I buy these from all different types of uh, filament manufacturers at different quantities at different times. Um, I do have a write-up in my school community about some of the brands that I use and, and I've had success with over the past. Uh, we will be switching over to three kilogram rolls for the P1P printers in the back. Um, so that should save time in terms of, you know, just having to uh, re refill the uh, filament as it runs out. So a thousand rolls, we, we, we pay about an average price about $11 landed. Um, and that's just the mix between our solid colors, our PLA, our, our silk, our rainbow. Um, average cost $11. The solid color PLA colors I get for much cheaper than $11, but then sometimes the rainbow and the silk go above $11. So I'm just averaging this at $11 at any given point. Um, so a thousand rolls at $11, that's about $11,000 in plastic that's here uh, at any given point. Um, electrical is also another big, I guess, setup cost when you're running a print farm. Um, I have in this space about 15 dedicated outlets that run to their own 20 amp breaker. Um, and that total cost when I first came into this space was, fortunately for me, was free. 
the landlord was nice enough to get all the stuff installed for me at no extra charge. But the invoice, I believe, was about $8,000 for all that work. Um, and it's run all across the ceiling here, all along the back wall, um, all along the back wall over here as well. Um, and for the near future, we'll probably be doing another uh, three outlets here. And we have enough power in this space to essentially double what we have here. So about, what would that put us to about uh, 360 printers uh, running without having to actually upgrade the panel, which is uh, kind of amazing. We do have three phase, three phase power here. Um, and the electric has confirmed that what we're drawing currently is only about half of what we can actually draw. Uh, electrical costs, again, uh, will vary on your situation. If you have a smaller print farm, you don't really need to upgrade your electrical or you don't need, really need that many outlets. Um, so that's just kind of something that I wanted to throw in there because that is a cost that I had to, or you would have to incur if you did start a 3D print farm. But one thing that's also very important is your shipping and packing station. Um, I'm not gonna put any of the cost of any of this stuff on here because uh, this is gonna be variable and depending on your situation. Uh, at one point I was just using like Costco folding tables and just working off there. I was using my laptop. Um, the 3D printer, or I'm sorry, the thermal printer that I use is the roller printer. So we have a few of these around the warehouse that we use specifically just for, you know, our four by six shipping labels, our three by one um, Amazon and Walmart and TikTok labels. Yeah, so I'm not including any of that stuff in this video. Um, another major expense is probably your shipping supplies, like your boxes, your tape, things like that. Um, again, that's very variable depending on your scale and your size. Um, at one point I was just using all of the 3D printed filament boxes to ship out products. So I didn't have to buy uh, actual boxes. Um, my wife gets a lot of these poly mail bags, bubble mailers from Timu at like one cent per, ba per bag. It's extremely cheap. Well, that's probably going away in the near future because of uh, the tariffs and Trump. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna include any of that stuff. I just really, really wanted to include like the meat and bones and like the hardware part of uh, what it costs for all this. And I just wanna say this, that I did not, you know, just dump all this money into this space and into this print farm. Uh, it's been a journey over a handful of years where I've pretty much reinvested most of the profits back into the business. And so, you know, getting more shelves, getting more printers, buying plastic in bulk, things like that. So um, I don't want to discourage anyone, right? I started, I started with one 3D printer um, and then I grew from there. So uh, it is possible to just start from the ground up, learn your ways uh, to learn how to make money with 3D printing. And then eventually, if you want to get to this size, uh, you can. Um, it's totally up to you. Uh, it's definitely not a walk in the park. And one last thing I want to mention before I end the video is uh, the third biggest expense outside of the printers, outside of the filament, uh, for me anyway, is my labor cost. I have a very uh, amazing team, right? Evan, Walter, Nick, uh, they, they come on, they've assisted me with the 3D print farm. Uh, Evan, shout out to you if you're watching, uh, has been a workhorse and you know these, these guys really care about uh, this business and making sure that everything runs properly and smooth and smoothly. So um, that is another expense that down the line, if you get to a scale like this, right, this is not possible to do on your own. Um, you probably could, but it'll, it'll just be too draining and um, you won't really have time to do anything else, I would think. Um, I think when we were at like 60 printers, it was, uh, it was manageable at 60 printers, but then as uh, we got those numbers up to 100, now 100, close to 180 3D printers, um, having people who know how to uh, maintain and manage the print farm uh, just saves a ton of time. All right, well, that's gonna do for this video. Uh, I'm sure I made some math mistakes somewhere here in my calculation, so uh, please grow me in the comments. Uh, I'll be waiting for that. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments or if you think I left out anything significant, uh, please let me know. I will uh, respond to the comments down below. Thanks, bye.